what up guys welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to now nah, i'm just fucking with you guys <laughs> what's up man welcome back to the channel in today's video we're gonna talk about money in the bank last night and how am i i I'd have to say man it was a good show you know what i'm saying david here lately throughout the week leading up to here has been kind of you know I've been kind of missing a lot of shows. I tune in and I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm just not feeling it. I turn it off. But nonetheless, I still had to watch the pay-per-view. And surprisingly, I was I was entertained, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there were a lot of good matches. Uh, even inclu including Roman Reigns' match last night with Edge. That match was actually fucking on par. I have to go ahead and say uh, I give it a four out of five. And for sure, 4.5 out of 5 at least, because it was a damn good match. I was feeling the the heat between Edge and Roman. I was feeling the, 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 the you know, the disdain, the, the, the hate between these two superstars in this match. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, of course, as you've seen in the background, it, after it ended, Roman Reigns retained. He defeated Edge, and he defeated Edge with the distraction. From Seth Rollins, who I wouldn't look at it as a Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins trying to, you know, pull the shield back together. No, I look at it as Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins probably, you know, they it's just prolonging. They teasing this match later on down the line. And after what happened last night, I could see that this match between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins will continue. Or this match between Edge and Seth Rollins will probably go on to happen at SummerSlam. While we might be looking at these two guys right here going at it for SummerSlam now. <laughs> John Cena coming back, man. Of course, we talked about this. We heard uh, that he might be coming back. It's been speculation for weeks now. And yeah. He he popped back up last night at the end of the show, and basically just I'm assuming he just not acknowledging Roman Reigns, I guess. So, <laughs> so with that, uh, yeah, the John Cena, he he, we going we we definitely should be seeing John Cena and Roman Reigns at SummerSlam for the Universal Championship. Uh, last time these two fought, I don't think that they had, uh. There was not a title involved, and it was more like John Cena helping the WWE groom Roman Reigns on the mic as well as for the crowd. This last year since Roman Reigns has made his return as a heel, it's probably been some of his best work to date in the WWE. And honestly, as much I know he he would like to be heel. I mean, he said personally on other people's podcasts and whatnot, Chris Van Fleet, I believe, Chris Van Fleet, Fleet or whatever you want to call him. Uh, he's told Chris that man he he preferred to be a heel. I mean, a face, but shit, you just gotta honestly, you gotta feel it though, dude. You gotta understand, Roman. Right now, you doing the best work that you've ever done, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm, I'm I was never I was not a big fan of face Roman Reigns. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he was trying too hard here. Now I feel like he's just comfortable and relaxed, and he's moving into this character a whole lot better. And not especially since he's brought together the Usos who also beat the Mysterios last night on the pre-show for the championship, for the tag team championships, they now have all the gold except for the uh, Intercontinental Championship. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I seen a tweet from Bronson Reed that read, hmm, Look like you need somebody to hold that Intercontinental Championship. Now, I didn't know Bronson Reed was Samoan. You know what I'm saying? But that I take a good look at him here lately, he looks a little bit Samoan. He looks Samoan. I mean, I still believe that uh, Apollo Crews and his fake general over there, that general should be the one that's over here because he's more Samoan than whatever. He's more Samoan than Nigerian, for one. And two, I just think that he'd make that big, he'd round out the team or a big man in general, such as Bronson Reed, or I can't remember that guy's name, but uh, Apollo Cruz's general guy, whatever his name is, uh, he'd 
they have to think that they be they this faction would be better with a big man. It'll just seal it with a big man. You know what I mean? I mean, I still believe that, you know, to make it a complete dynasty thing that they need Tamina and Nia and Nia Jax to, 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 to hold a tag team, the women's tag team championships instead of Tamina and Natalia. But I guess it is what it is. And we have to take it for what it, what it is in WWE. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, another thing we're going to go and talk about, and we're going to talk about the women's money in the bank match and how Nikki Cross, Nikki Ash, Nikki A-S-H is what they're calling her out there. They just need to go ahead and just call her Nikki Ash has become the new women's money in the bank. Now, the match itself was kind of gimmicky as far as I'm concerned. I wasn't really paying much attention to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean... I don't know where WWE is going with this, with with the money in the bank matches here these last couple of years because of the winners and the, to given the winners that have won it last year it was Otis that won the men or the year before I don't I can't remember I think it was last year, uh no it was the year before Otis had won it, and then turn around and the Miz had uh beat Otis for the th- contract or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, the, all that whole debacle happened. And now we have Nikki Ash, who nobody thought was going to win. Nobody's probably taken serious. She's taken upon this. She's rekindled a heroic flame in the WWE a la uh, uh, Hurricane Helms. I'm sure he'd be proud right now. But uh, yeah, I, I Nikki Cross won. I mean, Nikki Ash has become the new Mrs. Money in the Bank. And honestly, I hope the WWE do something with this that actually makes sense. Because at this moment, I really don't know exactly what's going to happen with this, considering who we have as champions right now with Bianca Belair being hot still and not even defending last night because I'm assuming she defended Friday against Carmella. Whatever, champions defend every day, especially at pay-per-views, Bianca. Stop that shit. And, uh, yeah, our new women's champion, new Raw women's champion, which we're going to talk about uh, later, Charlotte Flair. I mean, I just don't see what's going to happen here with Nikki Ash winning this Money in the Bank championship. I mean, hell, I just, I won, if anything, I hope one, they give her a shot. She's a good athlete. She's coming, you know what I'm saying? That she can she can be good if they allow her to, just like anybody in the WWE, but I just don't know, man. Maybe they, I hope they don't pull like another Otis on her and make her put her money in the bank contract on the line again to match. Just to if that was the, that would be off or not. Why in the hell would you do that when you should have just went on ahead and crowned whoever you wanted to be, you know, Mrs. Money in the Bank. But uh, well, it, it was an okay match. They, they graded it to C. It wasn't all that. I mean, like I said, it was gimmicky, and I think that's what hurt it a lot. So, yeah. Congratulations, Nikki Ash. All right. So, on to the Raw Tag Team Championship, where we had AJ Styles and almost taking on the Viking Raiders, who have regained their name. They're no longer the Viking experience. They are the Viking Raiders again, and I'm glad to see that. You know what I'm saying? I had to ask my, my homeboy, man, you think Riddle Riddle going to get his first name back? You know what I'm saying? He going to go back to being Matt Riddle again, or we just going to be Riddle? You know, the Raiders got their name back. You know, maybe it's because of a live crowd. I mean, I don't know. And that is also, nigga, we had 13,000 people last night in Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, more than that, at that Money in the Bank pay-per-view. So the live crowd just – really does bring the life back to the show. I really will have to say that I enjoy hearing the fans uh, voice their opinions for the stars in the ring. You got heels getting uh, cheers and faces getting booed, and that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? And WWE knows that too. So, yeah. AJ Styles and uh, almost retained. I mean, uh, honestly, I believe that – AJ Styles and almost retaining is just a, a, a one thing. Either one is to keep AJ Styles around and happy or whatnot, like my boy Rage said, or two, like I think. I think it's to really push almost 
and promote him as the big man of the show, being as they don't have a big man on Raw anymore with the release of Braun Strowman and not really too many other guys who are big man or really big man as far as Vince is concerned with height and stature and, you know, muscles and muscular and whatnot. So I think that, you know, this is a good thing. Maybe, you know, he did perform last night. He got in the ring and and almost is almost is actually getting pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I, after this AJ Styles stint or whatnot, I'm looking forward to seeing what they got going on for him next. So AJ Styles and them retain the uh, Raw Tag Team Championships against the Raiders. And yeah, that match was A-OK considering that AJ Styles took the brunt of the beating. You know what I mean? Like they were dropping some bombs on AJ. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for almost, I think AJ and whoever else Whoever his other tag team partner would have been, if almost wasn't it, he probably would have lost. You know, so moving on. <clears throat> Bobby Lashley and Kofi Kingston. Oh my God, dude! This match was like playing WWE, playing a WWE game, and turning it on easy. Hell, better yet. This match was like playing a WWE game and putting in both controllers and just letting that other controller sit there. What well, that that's pretty much what it was like, man. Bobby Lashley absolutely dominated Kofi Kingston last night. Literally, not once, not twice, three times he dominated this man in this match. Then he put him down. <sighs> Let me say something, man. That package the WWE showed before the match will Bobby Lashley say, man, enough of this bullshit. It's time to get back to business, dude. <sighs> Last night, what he did, they gave it a grade, a B grade. And you probably would, if this was in a video game, it probably would have only been a two-star match because of the way it went down. Kofi Kingston looked like a child last night when Bobby Lashley was beating him down, dude. He threw him from pillar to post, literally. And then just, why don't you apply, dominated him three times, dude. And then turned around after that, put that hurt lock in on him, bro. Kofi was laid out, bro. That was the most dominating victory I ever seen Bobby Lashley take, ever. Like I told, like I told my boy, man, I think he buried Kofi with a plutonium shovel. Dude ain't coming back for another title shot. This was it. Like I seen a tweet the other day that said, no, I, I have a hard time believing Kofi can beat anybody in a real fight. You know, especially anybody like Bobby Lashley. But I, this was a good this this storyline up until leading up to Money in the Bank. It didn't have me invested. I'm going to be real with you. I don't see Kofi as a real threat to a man like Bobby Lashley, especially Bobby Lashley went out there and ate that man last night. He took this man, and that was it. That was it. It shouldn't, bro, I'm surprised he lasted. The only reason he lasted longer in this match than he did with Brock Lesnar is because Bobby Lashley wanted to punish Kofi Kingston last night, and that's exactly what he did. Did I feel bad for Kofi? No. You talk a lot of shit all the way up to that moment, and you got it all pushed back down your motherfucking throat, Kofi. Bobby Lashley, congratulations on a dominating title defense. Now, there have been rumors that Goldberg's supposed to be coming back, and there also were the rumors that John Cena were gonna was going to come back as well. And John made his appearance last night after Roman Reigns' match. I was kind of, I now, I was thinking that Goldberg was going to make his appearance last night after uh, Bobby Lashley's match or whatnot, you know what I'm saying? And I did a video yesterday on my thoughts about using old talent like Goldberg or whoever to in championship matches on big pay-per-views just because <laughs> Bobby Lashley better beat Goldberg. Simple, flat out, that's it. It's Goldberg. These motherfuckers are at least about 10 year difference in age, and, and they both are past their 40s. And Bobby looks like he's still in his 20s, yet Goldberg can barely walk down that ramp. 
Bobby Lashley better beat Goldberg. I don't want to hear that bullshit. Goldberg can't be stopped. He beat the fiend. He beat bullshit. Bullshit. Goldberg shouldn't even be in the ring at SummerSlam, dude. Simple as that. Hell, John Cena probably shouldn't even be in the ring at SummerSlam fighting Roman Reigns. If anything, I'd rather see Edge, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins in a triple threat match. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? That's my opinion. You let me know what you think down below. Bobby Lashley, dominant win for the retain the championship. That's that. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair, man. This match was surprisingly one of my best matches. I actually enjoyed this match from the I, I enjoyed the pack and the lead up to the match too. How it made me not don't get me wrong, I don't have any real disdain against Rhea Ripley, but it's a testament to the to the story when I'm invested to the point where I clearly didn't like Ripley in this situation. Regardless if she's a heel or a face, the way they played it, I was confused. I because the all through the weeks Ripley was playing taking pages out of Flair's book, and it was clearly she was just getting at her. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get in her head and whatnot. And, you know, dude, let's be realistic, dude. Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley, don't get me wrong. Rhea Ripley may be hot, but Charlotte Flair is Charlotte Flair. And ain't nobody going to take that from her. You know what I'm saying? She ain't nobody going to take her credentials from her or whatnot. The woman is the the, the queen of this bit uh, in WWE. She's the top woman in the business, in this business, right? In WWE's, under WWE's roof. You know, I've heard other... I've heard, I just watched a video of Britt Baker on AEW was saying that she's the number one woman in the business. I like how at each show you can't take that like that. You can't take it that serious because at AEW, hey, Britt Baker is the number one woman over there. And right now, Charlotte Flair is the number one woman on Raw. You know what I mean? Just like Bianca is the number one woman on SmackDown. But last night, this match between Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair was heated. And. I, I I enjoyed it honestly, and it, it, I did hear the crowd chanting, "We want Becky, we want Becky," because there were there were speculations and wishes and wants for Becky Lynch to take on Rhea Ripley somewhere down the line. I would have liked to see it, given that their characters and whatnot clashing and whatnot. Becky Lynch being the man or the mom man, whatever you want to call it, Rhea Ripley just being Rhea Ripley, but. In this case right here, I think Rhea Ripley bit off a bit more than she can chew, and she paid for it last night. Uh, Charlotte locked that figure eight in after a couple of smashes of the leg between the steps. And, yeah, Rhea had no choice but to tap out. Relinquishing that title to the queen, and, yeah, I don't know what we had, like fucking 15-time world uh, women's champion now for Charlotte Flair. Congratulations, lady. You're on your way to beating your father's record, man. All right, let's head on into the men's Money in the Bank match featuring Ricochet, John Morrison, Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Seth Rollins. Bruh, this match, if they didn't give this match an A-, a minus, okay, well, if they, I figured if they didn't give this match an A, then they, I don't know who the hell was watching the show. The match wasn't, it, it, it was damn good. With high flyers like Ricochet, John Morrison, and fucking uh, uh, Riddle, or not, I was just say Ricochet and John Morrison backing up the high flyer, uh, the the high flyer part of the match. You got Drew, Big E, Kevin, and you know they pulling in that heavyweight part of the match. You know what I'm saying? And then you had Riddle and Seth Rollins and Nakamura coming in with the quick strikes and whatnot. It was a very balanced match. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed. The, all the high flying spots, I enjoyed, enjoyed all the ladder spots. Hell, I even enjoyed when uh Jinder Mahal came out there and beat down with his two boy with uh the new dude from uh Saudi Arabia, Mansoor, and his other dude. I can't even remember his name, but they come out there, beat down Drew McIntyre with chair with a chair and drug his ass on up out of the title picture. Thank you. I'm no no I'm not a fan. I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Drew, but Dude, I think that him winning that money in the bank would have resulted in him probably going after Bobby Lashley again, and who the fuck wants to see that? And then again, it might have resulted in him running over there and going after 
uh, uh, Roman Reigns tonight, that night. But uh, him him getting not winning this match was a good thing for him. his career, I believe, because it'll give him that opportunity to go ahead and when they get the draft going, he'll go ahead and go to SmackDown and he'll get into another rivalry with, with Roman Reigns a la Survivor Series last year where him and Roman Reigns had a match and he lost. Maybe he can get, get some redemption. And Ricochet, man, I wish I could push play on this gift right now, but I'm pretty sure I'll get a copyright strike. But if you've seen the match, and I'll just put it in the in the, in the the picture for you, in the words for you. Ricochet is on this ladder. Riddle pushes him off this ladder. He steps on this rope right here and flies off the rope into the crowd, into the other guys that's out there, the whole of the other five men. Fucking amazing, dude. This match was just, this was a Monday. This was a ladder match right here, and I enjoyed it. I I really enjoyed it. And uh, we talked about Red Edge and Roman Reigns. They gave that a solid A. Nice. Uh, Edge and Roman Reigns, it was a good match. It was. One of Roman's best matches, man. Edge brought a lot out of Roman tonight, that last night, and I'm, I'd like to see what happens now that John Roman Reigns has had this career changing title reign since the last time him and John fought there was no title on the line Roman was facing still learn still getting his shit together now that he has his shit together and John has made his return this looks to be a damn good rivalry going into SummerSlam especially since I do not believe John Cena is going to acknowledge Roman Reigns as the head of the table so yeah so yeah, that that right there about sums up Money in the Bank last night, guys. And uh, I guess the biggest take from this for anybody would have to say be that John Cena made his return. I'm assuming that tonight on Monday Night Raw we'll find out what's going to happen with uh Bobby Lashley and whatnot. Whether he'll be who his next opponent will be, whether it be Goldberg, I hope not, or whether it be somebody who actually deserves a title shot, Keith Lee. You know what I mean? I mean, think about how they did Keith Lee. Keith Lee came over and had a bunch of title shots against Drew McIntyre uh, or whatnot, and they fell short. I, f- I think they felt like they gave him what he came to the WWE for, to be on Raw and the challenge for the WWE Championship. But you got to understand, that's not exactly why this man came over to WWE, I believe. This man came over to WWE to not only be a champion in NXT, which he was, but I'm sure he would has the same dream that everybody else in that locker room has, they want to be the face of the company. And, come on, man. You don't think Keith Lee could have been the face of Raw? I mean, shit, no disrespect to Bobby Lashley. Hell, I even wanted Bobby Lashley and Keith Lee to go ahead, MVP to get Keith Lee into the Hurt Business, and boom, you'd have had Bobby Lashley, uh, Cedric, and, uh, Cedric Alexander, I was going to say Cedric the Entertainer, Cedric Alexander, uh, Sheldon Benjamin, both of these two motherfuckers who ain't been even, who ain't even been around, since, you know what I'm saying? And then you would have had fucking Keith Lee. That would have been a dominating fucking faction right there. But WWE at the time, I guess, and still here sometimes, don't know what the fuck they doing. So, yeah. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down on, on it and subscribe if you knew. Comment down below what you thought about last night's Money in the Bank match and what do you believe the road holds going into SummerSlam, since we already pretty much know we getting Roman Reigns and John Cena, and I'm sure Edge and Rollins is going to be there, too, to sell that beef. Uh, what's going on with Bobby? You think Bobby taking on Goldberg? And if so, why? You you down with that? Let me know down in the comments, man. Yeah, I really don't have much else to say about the pay-per-view. I guess I will be, you know, trying to keep these videos coming. And, yeah. Uh, talk to me, man. Let me know what y'all think. Get down low in the comments. Sh- voice your opinion on what's going down last night, tonight, and in the future at SummerSlam. Y'all have a good day. Stay safe. I'm out. Peace.